Internets, welcome back to another episode of the Premium Pete Show. Sitting down here with one of BX's finest. You. Okay. Uh, uh, you. Uh, very good uh, comeback story. I love a comeback story, too, because, uh, you know, my, I myself uh, have gotten into some things, uh, paid my time to uh, the, the, the different type of colleges in this world, and yeah. came back, never went back, you know, um, and really changed his life around. Got a lot of things, you know, going on. Just a lot of journey, man. You know, really, it's funny when I really think about it. It's like a, a superstar kid uh, to a crazy kid to now a, 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 a redemption kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's a great story. The one and only, the uh, the legendary Chi Ali is in the building. Peace, yo. Peace. Man, Thank you for having me, bro. Of course, of course, of course. Listen, the story, you know, it's funny, too, because the story is... Uh, there's so many layers when I think about it. When I started to do more and more, when I told you, you know, we we're going to have you on, I started to do more and more understanding of the layers like you know you're a kid who who was like literally like a child star you know what i mean 12 11 12 years old have somebody like the legendary the late great chris lighty courting you trying to sign you actually i think correct me if i'm wrong but you were the first person ever signed a violator right i was i was the first person he signed when he first got violated it was he he started off with relativity before okay he, that's right that's before, right yeah. before he even went to def jam so you know when people ask how it started to me it's like hip-hop it started in the bronx um i'm from the bronx i'm from co-op city um chris and i met in co-op city through latifah at the time her queen latifah yeah queen latifah's dancers allison and kika the safari sisters they were living in co-op and um, I guess they all knew me from my older brothers. I had older brothers, so they probably knew me from them. They all probably went to Truman in high school together. Or they might have just, and that, and just from around the way. So everybody, like in co-op, when Latifah would come through, that was the shit. Like, you know, everybody would be like, yo, Queen Latifah. And this was before she was really popping, popping. Sure. Like, Wrath of My Madness was popping. But, mm -hmm. you know, the fact that she had a video was special back then. Sure, sure. It wasn't it, but a handful it of motherfuckers. It solidified you, yeah. too, you know? So... You know, when she would come through, it was like, you know, she was living, it was like a summer. She stayed with Allison and Kika, and that summer it was just like, that shit was just like a, a hip-hop fucking summer for Co-op City. Because, I mean, everyone from Light to Special Ed to EPMD mm. to mm. Jungle Brothers, Chris, Shaquem. I mean, every on any given day, everybody would be up there, and I was just like the, the little mascot. You know, I'd be running to the store or whatever. I just knew, I, I, and at the time, I didn't even rap. I just knew, you know, I was just an average kid coming home from school, watching videos, doing my homework, and I knew, like, I was, like, a crazy KRS-One BDP fan, and, like, I don't know a if teacher. It, Yeah, I don't know if it was self-destruction time or probably a little before that, but I know I seen Willie D on Fordham Road one day mm. with the BDP jacket, and I just knew I wanted to be in that scene you know what i'm saying and i swear at the time i didn't wasn't thinking about rapping but that's really where it started right there you know co-op city you mentioned the block is hot at that time you talk about all those type of people you know queen latifah epmd chris lighty i mean just think about that today yeah. how is co-op city I mean, I haven't really been there in a while. Like, I'm in and out. I might go through Bay Plaza. Or I might. It's a is little. It got, uh, is, it's a Spanish restaurant across the street from Bay Plaza. That's okay. nice. And like on Friday nights in the summer, they should be popping. They got the music. You know, <laughs> this shit is alright. Got the margaritas. Um, yeah, all of that. It's one of them type joints. Exactly. Um, so I guess it's cool. You know, I breeze through every now and then. My brother, my oldest brother, still lives in co-op. Um, so you know, I'm I breeze through, but I'm not really hanging out. Yeah, yeah. Which so, is smart. Which is smart. But um, I mean, I'm. Old. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I get it. I'm, you know, we're probably around the same yeah, age. The I'm, reason, I'm 43. How old are you? 44. Yeah, I'll be 44 in May. The reason why I say that is, is you know, it's funny, too, because we grow up, when you think about this, right? You know, like, I grew up in Coney Island, and then I grew up around, like, Bay 50 and all these other areas in Brooklyn. You know, when you think about it, like, I remember, like, we literally, like, I went to, like, Cancun. Wherever I went, we fought for where we came from. Yeah, that's and then fact. And then when you think about it, you know, where you came from is not the same anymore. I remember I brought it's my daughter like around it. the block. That, like, I, like this clean. is a block. Yo, when I came home, yeah. I was just bugging. Harlem to me was just wild clean. Like, it doesn't seem that clean anymore, I guess, because I'm here a lot more. Yeah, but yeah. when I first came home, compared to 10, 12 years ago, Harlem was extremely clean. I was like, yo, what's going on? This shit is nice. Like, it was <laughs> it was nice. Like, yeah. they got a bunch it's of new buildings. To live and, over yeah, there, yeah, like, that shit is nice. But that's it's good, you know? Yeah, I mean, listen, you know, it is a good thing because it's like almost like. You know, I, I, I'll give you an example, you know, it, it, it's even getting off the block, like, and, and living, like, you know, now I live in Jersey, almost near Philadelphia, I'm a Brooklyn kid. But, oh, yeah. I'm, oh, but yeah. right, right by Cherry Hill, 
Okay, you know, it's I'll be a different. In Camden. Is it okay? Nice, nice. Yeah. Camden, it's a no. different area for me. You know, like I always tell people, I grew up. You know, outside it was like hey. everybody. Everybody knew everybody's business. You know, it was crackhead James on the block. You know, Shirley was a trick. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and then and then now it's like I don't see anybody. I got deer on my lawn. I, that's you know? why I be bugging because it's like our kids are living a completely different life from us. And it's like I mean, it's a beautiful it's, thing. It, it is beautiful, but does it scare you? And the reason why I say that for is because sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm right now I'm speaking from like father to father. You know, uh, my daughter grew up in Brooklyn, and she has that style to her, and like, you know, no, but she's a good kid, and I'm proud of the way she, the woman that she's becoming. But my son, you know, he's only five years old, and I look at him, I'm like, yeah, he's gonna know wow, I know a corner store. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that, right? There's nothing wrong with that. But I do worry, and 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 you tell me if I'm wrong, but I, I do worry that like, you know, that you should have some street smart. How yeah, do you get that out but, there? But I mean, I don't think it's. I mean, it's. It's, I don't think it's, you can, you know, walk straddle the line with it. I think it's probably more or less one or the other. I mean, unless you have, like, the grandmother that live in the hood where he's he's back and forth. Or, like, your daughter, like, my oldest daughter, she's 21. She lives with my parents in Harlem. But um, she's, like, way more street than my daughter and son that's down in Maryland. You know what I mean? Like, it's just day and night. And, I mean, I want them to have it, but... Part of me is like, man, fuck it. I'll, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'll yeah, live yeah, without yeah, it. You yeah. know what I mean? I just, it's just a lot, you know, because, you know, my oldest, you know, when they got that in them, it's that attitude. Yeah, a yeah, lot yeah, comes with punk. it. A yeah, lot I mean, that's comes at New York. with it. That's at you New know? York, Bob. Yeah. That's a, you know, but, and I don't mean, when I say street, just for internet to listen, I don't only mean like teaching them, things. I just, like bad things or teaching them things that just go street on the street. Smarts. Just, just being just able to, yeah, to be aware. Know, yeah, you know like, I mean? shit, you got to be street yeah, smart. Yeah, because people, Especially in New York. Like, New York is just different. Yeah. Like, to this day, I, and I credit that to New York, like, wherever I'm at, I think I check my pocket for my wallet at least five, six times a day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm always just like, I got my wallet, got my keys, money here. Like, all day I'm doing that. And I think that I take that just from riding the train. Like, yeah, I just yeah, remember yeah. riding the train. I should be crowded. And I just be like, man, fuck what? This new and plenty of times shit. I've been on a train that I just went through the next car. You know what I mean? Because I was yeah. like, yo, this car don't seem too uh, good. Yeah. I'm gonna, I always was I'm, paranoid about yeah. like getting pickpocketed. Yeah. I guess a lot of my mans, you know, a lot of my friends from Webster was into the jostling and all yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that's in New York, that's a hustle, man. Yo, you know, let me tell you this quick story, and then we'll get back to the journey of TLE. <laughs> you know, I knew uh, things were different from New York when I was 15. I was, you know, I was running around. You know, I got in trouble. My parents sent me to my uncle's house in Florida. What part? Uh, Boca Raton. Okay. She was beautiful. It was lizards, yeah. palm trees. Uh, I was yeah. like, yo, that's why I got tat. I got palm trees on, on part on my sleeve because that, to me, I was like, yo, it seemed Where was Seinfeld's parents? It is uh, uh, that's a good question, man. They was in Florida somewhere. Yeah, I they think so, yo. That <laughs> That's so that's so that's so classic. <laughs> that's so classic. You know what I mean? And random at the same time. I love those people, man. They're funny. They, that's the one from Everybody Loves Raymond Wife, uh, and uh, not, uh, mother and uh, yeah. the father was classic. But uh, anyway, the 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 point I'm making is, I remember we left to go out to eat, and their garage and door was open. I was like, Yo, you left your garage and, and door open? Like, oh no, it's okay. And I was like, I didn't understand what okay it's was because really okay, like, yeah. we had like five locks when yeah. we grew up, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and and I realized that, you know, the further I traveled, now actually, you know, that's a, that's a good uh, segue for you. Growing up in New York, growing up in the Bronx, sometimes we think we know it all and we haven't even been off the block, you know? When you started to travel, you know, you were a young kid traveling, you know what I mean? 13 years old. Yeah. Like when you, do you remember the first time you ever left New York, New York City? Um, I mean, I traveled as a kid, you know, my parents, I was, you know, blessed to live in a home with both my mom and dad, and they're actually still together now. They're in St. Croix, they live between Harlem and St. Croix, so they've always, my grandfather's from St. Lucia, he married a Bayesian woman before I was born, so, so yeah, you know, so, <laughs> so I grew up on Dover Beach and Christ Church and all of that in Barbados, like, we would go to Barbados, I would be there for the summers and, you know, like, Christmas break and all of that. So I always traveled. So as far as moving, I was moving young. But as far as hip hop, um, I don't know the first time I traveled hip hop. I remember the first like time we went to Atlanta because you know at that time Atlanta, you know Chris Freaking Cross yeah. was just popping. So Jermaine Dupri was popping. Yep. Atlanta was really blossoming, and um, you know it was the hot place to be. So I remember, I just remember that trip vividly. You know, it was it was a dope trip. Just. In them early days, it was just it was dope because it was when you ran into other artists. It seemed like the love was more genuine, and it was it was like even when you work together, 
it seems like it should be easier now because you could just send me a song. You could be in L.A., I could be here, and we can knock it out one, two, three. But it seemed like back then it was... It was hard, we, yeah, we, yeah. We, It was harder, but we made it yeah, easier. Yeah, it you happen. know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. You made it happen. And and it just the vibe of us working together. Like, it wasn't... A, like, you know, now you got songs, collaborations, dudes never even met each other. Yeah, yeah, which is crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah, dudes would vibe with each other, get to know each other, yeah, I mean, they so, fuck with each other. So it was just a good time. I mean, I... Love hip hop. I feel like I grew up in hip hop, yeah. and you, you know, did. it made it paved the way for my whole life. So, I mean, it's just ill. And when I think back, I don't. I swear to God, here I don't know how it happened, bro. Like I ran in when me and Chris got cool. Like I never really had aspirations to be a rapper. I just knew I wanted to be on the scene, and and the shit just kind of like just popped off. I guess that's you know the way the stars align, the way shit was supposed to happen. You know, t t take us through, you know, being, because when was it that you signed, 12 or 13? I probably was, I probably was like 15 when I signed, but okay. me and Chris probably started running around when I was like 13. Well, it's actually, it, take us through the first time, you, you know, you ever met him, you know? Um, I think the first turn, time, turn, turn, the first turn. time, I mean, the first time I met him definitely was like in co-op at, at, okay, at okay. Allison and Kika's house. But he knew you as a young kid. I remember hearing right. stories. The, we didn't really hang out. You. The first time we really hung out was Latifah had a show at the Apollo. It was the Jungle Brothers Public Enemy. It was everybody i think it was like a, a free concert they was doing um and i asked her could i go and she was like yeah i'm gonna get you some tickets so whatever happened the last minute she was like yo i couldn't get the tickets but um you could ride with us in the limo and i'm, I'm like yeah, fucking yeah, sure. 12 13 years old that's I'm a like, good, that's a good yeah. uh, replacement so and then you know i think i had she came to my house and met my mom and dad and you know it was like i'm gonna take them and all that because i was still pretty young and it just so happened when we got to the apollo the Jungle Brothers was there, and I had already knew them from mingling with them in co-op. But, you know, Allison and Keegan Latia, they was girls, so they sure, was like, yo, sure. Chi, go with Chris. They was like, Chi, Chris, take Chi. So I was just with Chris from that point because I was like, yo, he going to go with y'all because I wasn't going to be in. You know, they had to do makeup and shit. So I was a little boy. So me and Chris was in the dressing room, and I think Africa had missed a flight from London. So Sammy B and Mike G of the Jungle Brothers is basically contemplating, like, damn, how are we going to do this shit without... Africa, the you know the third sure, member, sure. but the other uh, Rama, and um, I was like, let me rap, and they was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> now, how old were you at this time? I mean, this time I'm 13? thirteen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, that's crazy. So I'm, and I don't know what the fuck I was thinking about. I just, I don't know, homie. Like I don't know. I just said it, and they was like, what you gonna say? I had my pops used to send me to African manhood classes in Queens, and um. You know, one of the instructors, he used to make a, make us write poetry. So I had wrote a poem, and the poem was, the, I just rapped it. You know what I mean? And Chris was like, when they heard it, him and Mike G was like, yo, you, you're you not going to be scared? And I was like, nah. And they was like, all right. Mike G was like, yeah, well, I'm going to bring you out. Sammy B was like, all right, kid, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And I, Were they you nervous? Me Were you nervous at I was fucking probably about to faint. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm saying? I never performed. I never, you know what I mean? Sure, like, sure. It was just... Yeah. It just happened, like, you know, just some shit, you know. Just, that's why a lot of times it's just being places. Sure, sure. Because right when you're there, right shit could happen. Um, so you come out on stage? I come out on stage. Mike G brought me out. I started to do my little rhyme. You know, the crowd was like, go shorty, go shorty. <laughs> Nobody knew my name, so. But um, I did my thing. And when I came on, I'll never forget this, though. When I came off stage, like, Chris was, like, standing right on the side of the stage. He was like, yo. I'm going to sign you, yo. I got this label I'm doing. I'm going to sign you, yo. I was like, all right. You mm. know what I'm saying? I ain't know if he was serious or not, but I was like, I just was like, when we do the video, I just wanted to shoot a video. Yeah, sure. You know? Back then, you, we was kids. Videos was everything to me, you know? And um, that's basically how it all started. Yeah. Now, so so we move on to about 15 years old when he does sign you. I mean, what type of deal, like, you know, was even presented to you. I know your father has. I mean, it was a typical you. production deal. Chris and, had did you his get any deal. money up front. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Chris had his deal through Relativity, and I actually okay, was yep, signed sorry, to yep. Chris. I was signed to Violator. So I mean, I think when we signed, I forget what it was. Probably like forty thousand. You know. What is, what, at fifteen, you, I mean, I, I think I know pop, your pops managed. My pops right? was managing me. It's like once my pops seen it was real, like seeing contracts and shit, he kind of got involved. Sure. And um, once he got involved, but even if he didn't get involved, like the court still had to get involved because I was, I think, under 16. Yeah. And, and the court's basically, they just going to limit how much you can get jerked. Sure, you sure, know what sure. I'm saying? They just going to look over it and be like, all right, 
Did you, yeah. you, did you remember buying anything with that? Like that you um, that? I mean, I remember Sega like Genesis? a little later on, I bought my first. I just remember mad sneakers. Like I was a yeah, Bronx course, kid. Bro. I was a sneakerhead. You know, yeah, I was yeah, still yeah. in school. I remember being in summer school in Park West down in, on 50th. And I just <laughs> remember like summer school every day just having different sneakers on. Like I was just a sneaker. I mean, this was before I was driving. So it was like. All I could do was get yeah, fresh. Yeah, be fresh, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Of course, I mean, that's a new option. Much you too. wanted. But, you know, my pops was making sure I put bread away. And then, you know, he, um, I think my pops kind of got in between me and Chris's relationship. I think Chris and I's relationship would have probably been a lot stronger. However, and I probably would have blew up a lot more. However, at least starting out, I probably would have been getting jerked a lot. Yeah. A lot more than I did. Yeah. If, you know what I mean? Because, you know, once my pop stepped in, he was on it. You know what I'm saying? He, we, you know, where before I probably was using a lawyer Chris told me to use. Sure, that, sure. It's the same Chris yes, is everybody's paying. lawyer. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, it's just ridiculous how much of conflict of interest some of the situations people get in. And even to this day, it happens a yeah, lot. Yeah, people are. Because motherfuckers just want to get on. And I yeah. guess a lot of people just look at it like, I got nothing. Like, so. A little or something is is better than nothing. So they just, but you're not thinking shit. That little or something, that motherfucker sure. that's giving you that little or something may be making a whole lot. Sure. And right now, you're not stressing it. But once you got a little bit where you on your feet and could really see clearly and think, you know what I'm saying? Your back ain't against the wall because your girl been on your back the last four months about your bills and shit like that. When you could really see clearly, you could make better decisions and smarter decisions. You know what I mean? And that's why. It's bad coming in the game when people is really fucked up financially because I don't I feel like it's it, it, it alters your your decision making. Yeah, sure, making. sure, absolutely. You, know I mean? you make a good point there. You know, now, now you and your pops, what's your what was your relationship like? He was managing you, but did you get along with him? I or, mean, yeah. did you have a was, good relationship? It was we had a dope relationship because I mean we always did, and then that you know we was traveling the country. I mean, doing all type of stuff. Father and son probably should have do together, <laughs> but um, you know, it was a dope relationship, but. It was times where I probably crossed the line. I mean, I definitely crossed the line a lot. I mean, it was hard for him because, you know, most of my friends is older than me. Um, you know, probably three, four years older than you me. You know, I heard you say that before. And I, you know, it's, it's funny that you say that because that's how I grew up. Yeah. And to be honest with you, it's funny how uh, situations are s somewhat similar. But what I mean by that is I always grew up with older dudes. Uh, you know, I hung around a lot of older, older street dudes, older Italian dudes at the time. Um you know, I was I was hanging out with dudes five, ten years older than me, and I liked that. And they used to tell me, "Oh, you know, I, I learned from them, but I wound up doing a lot of the same shit." Yeah. So what I mean by that, they would tell me, "Don't, don't, don't do that," and I turn around next, you know, I'm. But doing and it's it, yeah. ill because a lot of the shit that my pops would tell me that I wouldn't listen to. If one of them would tell me, I'd be like, "All right." Yeah. And yeah. and and it's just weird like that. But I mean, it was just a strain on our relationship because you know my pops was my pops never drank and drug. He's been in AA and NA since I was probably like five six years old. So now I'm fifteen and sixteen. It's like after a video shoot, if all my mans is rolling up and we smoking, it's like he don't want to come and embarrass me. Like what the fuck you doing? But at the same time, he don't really approve of it. But everyone's doing it, and you know I'm with. Sadat X and Black yeah. Sheep and this one and everybody's so so it's like as a father what do you do you know what I mean you go play your little song come here what the fuck are you doing little you know what I mean so and then I was making money so it's it's you know probably hard for him to really he's got to play father manager and probably at times friend too sure and so I mean it 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 started to be a real strain on us because he wanted what was best for me as far as my career paperwork wise. And sometimes, you know, as a young kid, you just want to shoot the video. Sure, you sure. Know, you don't. You may care. argue with him, yeah. even if he's right. Yeah. So it was, you know, it was just different things. He would be going to the label for, like, with my school, and when it was like I was missing too many days of school, they sent me to a tutoring school. But that shit was like fifteen G's a year. Did which, the label pay for that? Yeah, like yeah. my pops pressed the label, like yo, and and they ended up paying for nice. it. Nice. Um, like a lot of little shit. He was you just finish? pressing. You, you finished? Yeah, I ended up graduating from there. Nice. Um, from Beekman Tutoring School. It's like 50th <laughs> between second and third. A bunch of rich, super rich, really? like race car drivers, daughters and shit. Like, <laughs> NASCAR like, shit. Everybody smoked cigarettes. I remember the, the school had a backyard. It was like a brownstone. It's on 50th. And I remember like in the backyard, everybody was smoking. I'm like, holy shit, these kids' parents let them smoke. You know what I'm saying? Like, But they was it was, it was 15 bands a year for high school. So, you know, most of them was... <laughs> 
most of them was well off. Yeah, um, yeah that's crazy, man. But you know, I think for the most part, we had a great relationship. Um, is Pop still around? Yeah, he's in yeah. St. Croix right now. Okay, him and my mom's in St. Croix. You know, you know, I heard you speak about support, and uh, you know, like I said, I've been through some things, different, you know, different things, but where. Uh, they always supported me, even when I went that through, you know, right, wrong. and I know, you know, and we'll get to different things, but throughout your careers and different changes in your life, you know, you've been through where you were locked up for a long time. Were they always there? Or did, you know, I mean, because yeah. I mean, it means a lot. Yo, here's the thing. Many yo. people, for people listening, I'm going to let you say, but that may not know. When I was away too, uh, I did three years. One of them was in the box and, and I was with kids. I never forget when I was in, uh, uh, uh what's that hub? Uh, uh, Marcy, uh, Mohawk, and there's like four different things. Yeah, I was in there. Byron, Auburn, yeah, when I was over there, there was kids in there ten years. I never got a visit. Yeah, uh, you know, don't get mail. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. And, and 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 people don't understand how important that is. Sometimes people who are away, and I know you could attest to this, we're selfish because what happens is once we start getting a taste of mail and we want all mail, like you're getting your name called is special. It feels good. Get, getting on a visit is special. It helps you keep that's your mind. That's the best thing. You know what that's, I mean? that's what you that's that's escape. Keep, yeah. You know what I mean? That's your escape. How, how was it having, you know, even though you're dealing with, we'll get into, uh, you know, that part, but how was it even just having the support of your family? I mean, to me, that's how I got through it. Um, definitely how I got through it and how I got through it with my sanity and just staying in touch with what's going on. You know, when you start talking about over five years in jail, shit changes. And when you talk about a decade, now you're talking about a lot has really changed. Like when I went to jail, like what year was two it? ways was the shit. Oh, next 2000. time. Ne- yeah, next like time. the two ways was the shit. Mm, chirp, chirp. Like Sky I skies. remember, I remember. Yeah. I swear to God, I remember. Like when I was getting short, close to going home, I'm like, "Yo, I just want to get a phone and take pictures." I'm like, I'm asking my man, like you know, niggas that just came in. I'm yeah. like, "So you saying when the chick call me, her picture gonna pop up on the phone?" And they like, "Yeah, <laughs> son." And I'm like, "Word." I'm like, "Oh, I'm just in my bed thinking, like, yo, that shit is gonna be amazing." Like little shit, like, but the world is really changing. You know what I mean? But. I mean, my mom and my my oldest daughter. I mean, they really rolled the bit out. I mean, my pops more financially, but you know, he he wasn't coming as much. You know, he, but he always told me that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but he kept if he gives someone. Yeah, but yeah. you know, he always told me, "Yo, you get locked up. I'm not coming to no jail." And I mean, he broke his word on that because he came a few times. But I think the severity of why I got locked up was why he broke his word. It wasn't like I got locked up for no two. I was facing real shit in a long time. And, you know, you can, you know, go crazy. You can lose your sanity. You know, people do it different ways. And in that experience, you know, you witness a lot. And when you see them people that don't get mail, it's like when you in the box, it's like when I was in the box, I was in upstate box. That shit is like 10 minutes from Canada. It's Canada stations. When I tell you that shit is like... That shit is crazy. My nigga, when I tell you, like... The f- when I first got there, I was in the cell. I didn't have a bunkie that first night. Yo, it was just the loneliest feeling I ever... F- like, you literally, like, nine hours from New York, you in the box. It, you, your family don't know where you at because you just got shipped there that day. It's nothing but racist white niggas. They wearing glove gloves. They telling you, walk along the wall. You come off the wall, we fucking you up. Yeah. Straight up and down. It ain't no sugar. You come off the wall, we fucking you up. And when I got in the cell, I just remember that night, it was so fucking quiet. Like, it was like an eerie quiet. And I just felt wild lonely. I, re- I remember the feeling when I was like four or five, my moms would go away. My moms and pops, when they would go away, they would take me to Miss Perry house in Bronx there. I don't know, she was like an older lady who I guess babysat me. And I remember I would wake up in the middle of the night, and one night I saw her husband's teeth, like, on the sink. <laughs> And like I was like, yo. And I went in the room and you know when you just wake up and not really sure where you at. Yeah, yeah, and it was yeah. just a lonely feeling. Like I wanted yeah, my yeah, mom's. Yeah, yeah. Yo, that first night in the box, I yeah. wanted my mom's, yeah, B. Yeah, I was yeah. like, yo. That shit was just the illest feeling ever. And I, it was just a depressing feeling because it's like, yo, you in jail on top of being in jail. So it's like you like, yo, I'm just a fuck up. Like, yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. You, you start to you start to yeah, yeah, the, the you bad just, thing is, like, is a lot. It's almost like it's almost like uh to be honest with you, I mean it's it's not it's not a full similarity, but it's almost like when you work a night job, it's very quiet, and all you got to do is think and reflect. I remember how much I would ref- I remember getting letters from my niece, and she's like, "I love you, Uncle yeah, Pete." I wrote, like, yeah. I wrote everybody in my phone book when I was in the bar. I would just go to. It's so boring, especially like that first week because yeah. you don't got your property. Yeah, yeah. You don't really got nothing to read. You just there, like you fishing. 
I remember a motherfucker sending me magazines, like really reading magazines cover to cover, like the first page with the yep, table of yep. contents, the shit they selling, really reading every single, everything, like nothing to do, counting the bricks on the wall in the cell, like, yo, damn, we are fucked up at, fuck it, let me start over. Like, this retarded shit. I, I was in the box 90 days, I read 96 books, yo. Yeah. Like... Keep your mind fresh. It's when crazy. I left the box, I was like, "Yo, I'm not reading no more, yo, ever." <laughs> I was like, "Ever, I'm not reading no more." Yo, think about think about even before you know. I want to take people on a story, but but think about you know, you're a child star. Your pops is managing you. You know, uh, you're touring. You, you know, you you, you you know, you're in the. You literally became a rapper. You know, something that you thought that you would never become. You know, um, you know, I I don't know if this is the time, but. I know Karos one was somebody that you really looked up to, and I remember you saying that you met him before. I heard this before where you say that you met him and you're like, you know, it wasn't the same feeling uh, that you know yeah, that you had. Yeah, he was just he was the first rapper that I like. He was just when I met him, he was just arrogant. Not towards me, yeah. towards the promoter. But we it was a show in Canada. It was two black promoters, and it probably he just probably was having a bad day. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. What I'm so, right, so we won't hold that again. You know so. how that should go. But I just remember him like flipping on him. Cause like something on the rider wasn't right. Like I guess it's food or something. And he was like, and I'm like, like those dudes is black. Like you know, yeah, I yeah, love sure, this sure, nigga. Sure, like sure. you know what I'm saying. Cam sure. Rest was like pro black. Bro, black. love's gonna get you. Yeah, one of my you know favorite. what I'm saying. Listen, yeah. So it just you know it just surprised me. I guess it maybe rubbed me the wrong way a little bit. But you know, shouts to Karis one, but yeah, shouts to Karis one. The he was growing up definitely. I I used to like Karis one more than Rakim growing up. Yeah. Wow. Definitely. Yeah, nah, me too. Me too, for sure. Now, you think about Chi Ali, even at that time, who, like, is that some, was there other names that, that people, you, you ever go over, like, different names? You know how people have different names that they were going to go after, like, could be, you know, that you may have had, like, I, I don't know, you know, did you ever have names before that? Nah, like, this was my name, Ali is my no, middle no, name. Yeah, yeah, no, I know, but. So, like, I don't know, I guess, because, like I said, when the shit happened at the Apollo, it wasn't really planned. It wasn't really planned, so I guess that's more or less. Mike G probably was like Chi Ali, and I guess it had a little ring to it. I guess, and that's what it was. Yeah, it's, it, it's something that it's something that goes. But you know, it's funny because some names I know people are like yo, they just fell upon, and some tried a couple of different others. You know what I mean? It's almost like starting a business too. Think of the name. Sometimes you're like, I don't know why I came up with. That but name. I tell people all the time, like when people are starting shit and like debate over names and I'm like to me I don't really think the name is that important I think the name should be whatever you want it to be because I feel like in situations you gonna make the name like 30 years ago if I would have been like yo I'm gonna start some shit and call it bad boy you might have been like yo this kid just wants to be so tough yeah, sure, but sure. now that bad boy is a household name it's like it's second nature Yeah, but a lot, I mean a lot of shit probably wouldn't have sounded dope 20 years ago before it was dope but if you make it you know what i'm saying if you make whatever it is if you if premium pete is the name and you make it pop they everybody you know, premium that was a dope idea yeah, yeah, like, yeah, man, yeah. it was early it's kind of not that simple it's kind of simple you know yeah, what i mean yeah. but if and if it's whack it's gonna be like yo he could have had a better name yeah, yeah. you know how that <laughs> shit go oh well, you listen you could have little ali you could have young ali you yeah, could have had you know a uh, fat ali but that wouldn't have been the case because but you know i mean it, it's definitely something that stands out i remember the first time and i don't want to get off track but you know we bounce around you know but uh uh you know, I remember the first time too, uh, hearing h hearing you, and even even like when you think about the native tongues, and you think about that whole crew, and that, and and then you, what you had going. Think about even e even later on, okay. Like I said, I don't want to fully bounce around. Uh, I'm trying to stay organized uh, uh, in, in this 2020 life. Even even my even even in my regular life, I'm trying to stay more organized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but uh, process even. Where were you when you heard Ludacris shout you out in that song? I was on Rikers Island. Yo, let me. Did that <laughs> do anything? I was at C73. Was, the three building? Seven. Seven North? No, I was seven in upper? seven. Seven Upper. I wasn't <laughs> in Seven Top. I was in Seven Upper. Internets, lock in. Shouts to K Sway. Uh, how was that? The first time you ever heard uh, uh, that track with Chili? I mean, uh, with, I mean uh, at Ludacris. the time. Was that bad for you? I mean, not really. I mean,. I was on Rikers Island, like, you know, niggas. Hey, yo, G, yo, son, you heard that shit, son? So that's, you know, that's what I wanted to know, whether somebody told you that that happened. Yeah, somebody. I remember, um, 
this kid named Gorgeous Gangster told me he was a skinny kid from Brooklyn. He was blood. <laughs> skinny blood kid from Brooklyn, and he was cross-eyed, like super cross-eyed, like the ugliest kid ever, and his name was Gorgeous Gangster. <laughs> but he had, he was the one on the gate. It was like, yo, Chi, you heard that shit? Um, so, you know, I mean, from that aspect, it's dope because, you know, you in jail and niggas are shouting you out. But, I mean, I'm sure my lawyer wasn't you yeah, know, sure. <laughs> overly enthusiastic about it only because, you know, I'm fighting a case. And for some reason, you know, with, with hip hop, they'll bring your lyrics yeah, in yeah, as yeah. if it's not an art. You lucky you know it wasn't I mean? a wrap up at that yeah, time. Yeah, but it's like, imagine... You know, if Robert De Niro did something, they started playing Goodfellas. Like, yeah, yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. look. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. He's violent. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That shit, you'd be like, get the fuck out of here. Now, did you ever see, you ever meet Ludacris after that? Did you? I've never met Ludacris, period. Crazy. I met Robert never. De Niro, though, but not Ludacris. Really? Like, Where'd yeah. you meet Robert De Niro? I was actually supposed to be in a Bronx still. That's fine. Wow. Wow. I think that was like one of the first joints he 93. directed. 93. That was one of his first directorial. Yeah, he did his first. Yeah, that was his directorial debut. debut. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I can't believe I said that right on the first try. But yeah, I know you were like that. The, have a little tongue twister. <laughs> my, that was one of the things me and my dad got into it. Actually, he was pissed. Like, cause I think I was with William Morris, and they had called me. Like, yo, sent me the script. So I went. It was just like a little. It was a little racist. It was like, um, yeah. All right, like. You know, it was a bunch of yeah, kids. Sure, sure. But all the white kids was casted already. Where the black kids, we more or less were. You know, they didn't know they who had they had. Terrell Hicks' brother. Yeah, yeah who they uh, wanted for what? Um, it yeah. was another Dawson kid. He was my man. I think he lived in Harlem River Projects. I forgot his name. Um, but anyway, so then when we doing the scenes and shit, and they like, yo, y'all gonna be riding on the bikes. The white kids come, they jump y'all, and basically, you know, y'all get jumped. And I'm like. We don't get to fight back at all. It was just, it was just wasn't for me at the yeah, time. Yeah, sure, And sure. then I was probably popping a little bit, you know, on some Chi Ali shit. So I, you know, probably wanted to go do something else and didn't like it. And like my pops, I remember when I got home, he was like, you fucking left? <laughs> like, you fucking asshole? Like, he went wild on me. Yeah, I mean, I look, like, you know, it, shit. <laughs> you went with how you felt. You know, now, yeah. now you finally get a chance to put out your first album, right? The only album you put out, mm -hmm. you know, um, like how was that process? How long did it take you to make that album? Um, I feel like my freshman year in high school, we was recording it, so mm -hmm. probably. Now keep in mind, you didn't. You're young. You didn't know anything about the business, really. Chris basically at the time he was getting busy. He was still role managing the Jungle Brothers, doing different shit for Red Alert. Um. Now he had violated. Then he had Black Sheep too, I think. He was managing yeah, yeah, Black yeah, Sheep. Yeah, shouts to Drez. Um, I know you just like family. So he was managing Black Sheep at the time. You know, then had a bunch to do with Q tipping them. Yeah. He was he was basically force the four for you yeah. know, overseeing the whole native tongue shit as well as this sure. new violator relativity thing. Um so I guess I probably knew the beat nuts from being in Calliope Studios while mm -hmm. Black Sheep was doing their recording their albums. Of recording that first album, probably, pardon me. Um, I just remember more or less him like kind of like throwing me in there with less than Juju and mm -hmm. like, wow, <laughs> yo, I swear to God, with them niggas. First time I had St. Odds, I'm with them niggas in the studio. I'm in one of these chairs. Them niggas like, yeah, drink some more. And them niggas are spinning me in the chair. I'm like fucking 14. I was fucked up, but yeah. Dizzy them, yo, and fucked my up. My nigga, Lesson Juju used to be like, yo, they used to run all type of tricks on me, yo. <laughs> or just experiment shit with me. And I was a young kid who looked up to them, man. You know what I mean? They was producing my album, and. It was dope. You know, you had, everyone was coming through all the different members of, of Native Tongue. Um, Drez was probably there more than more than anyone else. Um, so it was just, I mean, it was dope. It, at the time, nobody was as big as they are now. You know what I mean? So it's yeah, like. They were young. Yeah, like everybody was young on the come up. Black yeah, yeah, Sheep yeah, 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 wasn't yeah. popping yet. You know what I mean? Queen Latifah wasn't fully yet. Yeah, there. I mean, like she had some play, but not like really, that. Yeah. Big like that. Daylight like, was the biggest. Bro, you look this at this shit now. Daylight like, was huge then. Yeah. But that was it. You know, yeah. Tribe was good, but they wasn't, you know, as big as they are now. So Yeah. Not for sure. You know, so 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 you put out do you remember the first day or night, like when when your album was put out? How was that put out? That was put out in the morning, like you know, you got you announced it at night, you know. Do you remember that exact day? Um the album? Yeah. 
I remember the video. I remember the first time Ralph McDaniels played my video, me and my man CeeLo. For the music you remember box. the Legion? Yeah, yep. CeeLo from the Legion. Me and him went to a um a movie down in Midtown somewhere. And we was taking a train uptown and motherfuckers was like, Hey yo, you got a video, right? We see him. And it was bugging. Like it was it must have been something going. I guess everybody might have been coming from the movie. I don't yeah. know. But it was a bunch of kids on the train. It was like it was in the evening. And they was like, and I was like, oh shit, a few of them might have asked for my autograph. And that was like my <laughs> first taste of People are, fame, you know what I mean? And it's No Ill. selfies back then. Nah, but it's ill is like, I guess I must have been like 14, 15, but that was, since then, that's like been my life, you know what I mean? Like people be like, yo, how does it feel when people come up to you or something? And it's like, I don't know, it's... Just yeah, what, sure, what so, life so, is like that's something like, you, you were used you know, to like for somebody age. like LL it's like yo I mean, yeah, I mean he's been doing all his life ask him it's like he was 15 like what the fuck you don't remember that much from before then you know what I mean do you feel like you never really had a childhood because your childhood was not the normal childhood I know I may I mean I don't know I feel like I had a childhood before then I feel like I had that typical childhood I, I think that shit just changed it um I mean, yeah, it probably did speed it up and made me, because, you know, I wanted to be grown. You know, I was with the motherfuckers I looked up to. Like, you don't understand, homie. Like, I was with LL sometimes. Like, LL was mad cool. Like, so, of course, you want to be, you know, I'm with them, but I sure. want to be really with them. You know what I mean? And it was just surreal for me. That shit was it was ill. Like, I had a dope, dope life, yo. Like, I really can't complain, man. Especially as a child, to be able to, you know, be around them and be able to say, these is my peers and for them to... Sure, sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, we didn't... I don't think we had phones back then, but shit, if, like, if it was now, like, I'd be able to, you know, FaceTime KRS-One or sure. Rakim. And at that time, that would be like, you know, if a motherfucker FaceTime Drake, you know, people gonna be impressed. Sure, you know what sure. I mean? And I was a kid, yo. Yeah. That's crazy when you really think about it. You know, he, he, so 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 your album comes out, you're moving along, you know, uh, doing shows, right? You graduate high school, the label got you a tutor, you know. Now, before, w when did you get locked up? I got locked up. Well, I called my case you? in how, 2000. How old were you? Uh, I guess 22. Okay, so, 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 what? Wh were you still on the label, like, in the sense of, like, because you didn't put out another project? I don't know. I think, like, because the, the deal, technically, I think I was still signed to the label. Like, if I wanted to record another album, I probably would have had obligations. Um, But the time limit may have expired because I think I signed in, like, 92 or 93. And I Did think, you want to put something I else out? Was, or? Yeah, like, boom. When, after the first album, you know, I think it sold 165,000 copies. Copies, pardon me, which at the time was yeah, decent. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You, for a first album, you know, you yeah. that was a first step. You know, you had people like Gangstar who I don't think went gold to like their third, yep, maybe yep. fourth album, but third, definitely third or fourth album. But going from 180 to 340, that was good progress. So we had started recording the second album, but in the midst of us recording, Chris left. He took Violator to Def Jam. I guess he had a, a op, op, option or something, or I don't know what the fuck happened. But he left, and when he left, Relativity had the option to keep me or not. They opted to keep me. But Chris was their rap guy, and they was like an alternative rock label. They had mm. like Joe Sotriani, and you know, they was a, a rock label. So once Chris left, he was their rap guy, and then he was my friend. It was like they was just assigning people to it. And that's really when my father really stepped in. Like, he was like, all right, well, he wanted what Chris had, and the label wanted what Chris had. And my pops was like, well, if neither one of us was getting it, we're going to split that. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So it was. It just was Matt like— Chris didn't try to see if he could get you over there. Chris broke out. Like, Chris— I think Chris thought he was going to make a lot of fucking money off me. And he probably would have, but my pops stepped in. You know what I'm saying? If my pops didn't step in, I would have been signed to Chris. He would have been managing me. You know what I'm saying? It would, I, he would have been doing everything. You know, yeah, you know, yeah, you, yeah. you know, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, no, no. So as much as he loved me, you know what it was. Yeah. Um, When my pops stepped in, you know, he regulated it. But in his regulation... Chris probably seen, well, shit, if he don't do this or that, I'm not really eating. So, you know, I'm saying he still wanted me to win, but if the incentive probably wasn't there, like, if my pops wasn't there, if he had total control. So when Chris left, he left. Like, he wasn't really, 
I don't think it was no hard feelings. He just was moving on to different things. They opted to keep me. I think if they didn't, he might have took me with him. I don't know. I was a kid. I don't, I don't know. Sure. So my pops is now, he's fighting for everything. And, you know, just through, through like, months turned into years and shit is going by. But we was recording still. Like, that, I do remember Chris still, like, put me in the studio with, like, plugging me with, like, Clark Kent and Premier. Sure, sure. Like, Sounds I got Clark, songs yeah. with Clark and Premier. And, and whatever happened to those songs? I mean, Premier, like, Premier, we did a song called No Surrender, No Retreat. That actually came out on a Relativity compilation. What about the album. other stuff you said that you were, like, half done with the album? I'm saying, I don't know. Like, I'm sure the producers, I know, like, Mole- the from Molecule, Molecules really, yeah. from the Legion definitely has okay. some because he produced a bunch of shit. Premier got the shit he did. I was with Clark in D.C. probably about maybe four months ago. He's probably got the shit he did. I'm sure all, if we find the producers, they got everything. You know what I'm saying? And then a few of my mans from co-op who was older than me but started, yeah, yeah. started producing it. I was putting them on. So, you know, I'm sure if you go through the archives, we could find some of it. You know, I don't I don't know about all of it just because, you know, so much time has went by. You know, we're talking about 20, you know. Tw- More than tw- that now. 20, almost 30 years ago, right? No, yeah. Right? Almost 30, almost 30 years ago. 25, Damn. between 25 and, that's fucking Holy sick. Holy fuck, yo. Do, do you even, do you even, do you even want to still put out, like, you Music? know. Not, not like. Do you? I guess so, but what I mean by that is this, and the reason why I say I guess so is because you know, do you still have a passion for new music? Because you're doing like, like your your life story is a fucking movie. Nah, like and, I and don't know. I'm, I'm past, past the music. Shopped, I'm kind of yeah. past the music yeah, yeah. thing. I mean, I'll still do a few feature if a motherfucker got some bread, and you know, certain beats that come on and make me want to write, and you know, certain you know. And mice, you know, my son, that's my yeah, bro. My son, mice, man. you know, mice still be on it hard. So, you know, sometimes, you know, I'll listen to some of his shit and be like, yo, let me get on the joint. Let me get on that joint. He'd be like, all right. You know what I mean? But for the most part, nah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, I'll be honest with you, man. Being an artist. I see him in movies yeah, now, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, he definitely feel he got a character about him. I mean, hopefully, not a he, facade. When I say character, like, a, yeah, you no, have no, a, no. A, a I mean, I will be with acting. I'm with, I'm with whatever. But yeah. I'm just we older now, like you know, know what I'm saying. Know, like I'm 43. I'm about to be 44. Like it's over. Like it's, sometimes you. Nah, know, I, I no, digress. It's, you know it's, why? It's, it's, yeah, yeah. I mean, it don't have to be. You got so, Jay Z so and in peace, two chains and rest in peace, Kobe. Older. Right. The narrative, not narrative, but the, the 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 thought is like, damn, he he retired from the NBA, but now he was starting his life at 41. Yeah. Like, I mean, they sacrifice so much with that. You know, what that's mean? true. But I feel so, like. You always got another, another second win. You know yeah, what I mean? I mean, I feel like I could do it. Shit, I could rap, especially with what the motherfuckers Send those is scripts. doing now. But yeah, I mean, look, this, I can't look, even listen to rap too long, yeah. man. Like I'll get to cut it the shit down, man. <laughs> look, transitioning. Listen, you know what? Listen, transitioning, being able to transition to me is success. Being able to evolve. That's success. Like you, okay. So Chieli was a rapper, right? Okay. Chia, well, let's just say Chieli is a rapper, right? But he also, you know, then you know, then he went away, right? But then now, well, you know, he's coming. Now he's doing books, doc, documentary. You know, he's going to visit jails. Maybe, you know, maybe he gets a little money from the doc. Now he's in the real estate. I'm just just giving examples. Like you evolving is 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 what success is. Make doing what makes you happy. You know, a lot of people want three three stacks to rap. You know, maybe not rapping is what makes him happy. You know, not, I mean, and I love rap, you know. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. Like when I hang out with Jada Kiss and shit. Like me and Jada Kiss were actually supposed to do a song. Yeah. Um, like it's dope, but um, it's just too much politics. Like if you in and you good, it's cool. But if you really like, I'm too old to really be trying to still finagle, and I don't really, I don't have the patience. You know what I'm saying? And I'm good. You know what I'm saying? I'm good with where I'm at, and I think. Most of the time, if you good with where you at and you got something you into and you not stressing financially, I think, then it's easier to move on. I think when you stressing financially, like, it's hard if you never worked to go to work at 40-something sure, sure, when sure, you was the sure. rapper getting sure, the money. Sure. And, like, that Living shit is a certain hard, life, you know, know eat, what I'm saying? Especially with labels, no, me and, you know who, eating who, certain foods. Me and Peter Guns talk about that all the time, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Cause That's a hard... It's it, almost... Let me tell you, and I, and I, I don't mean this... As as uh, uh, it's a good thing, but it's almost as hard as drug dealers, right? Yeah. When you deal drugs, when when you used to fast money, if you and get then you locked go, up and, and you get come locked home up, and, and then you come home, you got to change your you life. Like, around. Yo, 
Slow money is short money, but it's it, it's a very different transition, especially if you're used to keep in mind. You're ever- and it could be depressing at yeah, times. Yeah. It could be monotonous, boring, depressing, and at, and still may never give you enough for the average motherfucker out here. You know yeah. what I mean? A lot of us is dying in debt. And, yeah. You know, it's hard. And I, Yeah, but I, 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 you know, you're right. And I will say this, though. But if you can hustle and you can sell it, that's why I tell people. I used to go to back to the jails and, and, and visit. I know you've gone back a bunch of times. I tell them, yo, work. my book, yeah. yo, Pete, yeah, the yeah. book. T- t- that t- shit is t- a t- hustle, t- bro. The book came out, what, Wes? Uh, April. Like, a- okay, yeah. Yeah. Tell them, so you can get on Amazon. You I'm get on Amazon and, and I'm on my website. Okay. We're not in Barnes & Noble. Okay. Right now I'm on, you can go to chialibx.com. Okay. Chi Ali, so C H I A L I B X dot com. Bronx. Chi Ali B X dot com. You could get the book. Another but, kind but of freedom. Saying, you were saying something about but the book. But I'm yeah. saying like that's the mean hustle. Like, like I'm not paying a lot, and to be able to sell it for twenty dollars, like I'm, I don't mean I don't want to tell all my numbers, but I'm just saying it's the mean hustle. And I'm a nigga that ain't even popping like that for that motherfucker that got a million followers or three, four hundred thousand followers on on Instagram. Like you can make bread. Like it's so many different hustles. It's just, you got to just think and apply yourself differently. Like it's other shit to do other than rap. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's funny too, because your mind and, 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 you know, somebody told me too, like if you could be in, I forgot who this was, man. Fuck. I can't believe I'm forgetting who, but it was a dude I know that's been around a long time. He's like, yo, if you could be in my mind for a second, your head will blow up. And the reason why I say that for is you think about it. Let's go back over as we're on the journey. A child star, uh, 13 years old, being caught by Chris Lighty, the late great, you know, uh, rapping on stage, you know. <laughs> to uh, America's uh, Most Wanted. Yeah, what you happened? know what I mean? To, to yo, but, but actually, yo, to being asked for an autograph, think about it, on the train by somebody that's seen you, uh, shouts to the legendary Ralph McDaniels on Video Music Box. Ralph. To them being in a, uh, to, to a probably an old lady in fucking Nashville, like, who's this Chiali on, on, on America's Most Wanted? You know, uh, it, 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 it's crazy. You know, I, I'm so proud, more importantly, that, you know, you came home, you did your time, uh, you never went back, you know, you changed your life around, uh, you know, because people, you know, it's funny too, because sometimes people don't, pe- like, America is like the world of second chances, but sometimes they don't want to give it. They don't realize the struggle it takes. You know, yeah. I didn't have that type and, of thing. And, and we're yeah. picky about who we give our second yeah. chances to. Yeah. Like, some people we give, so you look, I look at, like, Marv Albert. Mm. Like, you would think nothing ever happened. Like, he's... Biting woman. Yeah, like, but then some people, they can't get past it. Yeah. And both races. Like, you got some yeah, black sure. people who they get past what they do. And some black people who is just a dub. You know what I mean? That shit is just weird. Like, we, I don't know if... It's us as society picking and choosing, but I feel like it's not. I don't know if it's the media or, you know, just the powers that be you, the people that's sure, running sure. the media. I don't know, but it's like we definitely, I feel like we pick and choose who we want to martyr, who we want to forgive, who we want to exile forever. And, you know, that's just the ways it be, man. It's crazy, but you think, you know, it's funny too because when you think about, like, you're rapping and then all of a sudden you come to a time where you know, you're facing a situation that one thing I give you a lot of uh, 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 admiration for is that you never, uh, n- not saying that why you would, but you you never try to, uh, I'm thinking of a word I'm using, like glorify it or or what you did. You know, you're a real dude, but, you know, yeah, somebody- I was locked yeah. up too long, man. I think the people glorifying them motherfuckers be doing the little bids. When you be locked up a long time like that, like some people do a little bit and learn, but some people- be like, I could do this. This shit wasn't nothing. You know what I'm saying? This shit is all boy camp. At yeah. the end of the day, it's all boy camp. But when you start, when they start taking real chunks like yeah, that yeah. out of your Football life. Football numbers. Yeah, like it's different. Like they taking you into different decades. They taking you into different eras of your life. Did, 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 you, have you, know a, did, you, did you have a lawyer? Like, you know, like, yeah, but, I, but, you know, did that drain you even like financially for family? Because like. I mean, I was on the run, so my lawyer had the bulk of his bread before I even got caught. Wait, wait, so that was good. So the crazy thing is, exp- it's just he wanted more bread if I would have went to trial. Like I think he wanted another ten bands, but we I ended up copping up. Yeah, but like, and he was like, I, if how we go we, to trial, we, it's ten thousand more, and I want run? that before we start. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, like he we're not gonna that. wait till you win or lose, nigga, because I'll never get my money. <laughs> And that's Your the lawyers truth. are crazy, man. I mean, think about nah, it. I respect if it, you but blow you know. trial, who the fuck is paying a lawyer? I just laws. And if you won, you love them and you happy and you're going to pay them if you got it. 
But if not, you're going to say, I sure, got sure, you, sure. and then you're going to get caught up in life. How fast, so so obviously, for inter- I mean, it's all public knowledge, you know, um, but how fast was the process of all that, you know? You, you know, um, for, especially for people listening to uh, Chi Ali, who's never heard of him, you know what I mean? I want people to understand some of the journey, but even people that know him, you learn a little bit more. I hope more so in the sense of, like, just as a, 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 a good, you know, human being that he is. Now, people may say that's crazy because of what he's been through, but... You know, I mean, shit happens. Yeah. If you want to no, let one yeah, night, of course, one of moment, d- 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 um, you know, uh, identify somebody's whole life. That's how you identify somebody for their whole life through one well, moment. I'm sure you good, people, good, yeah. good or bad. Uh, I mean, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You might have saved a lady. That don't yeah, mean you yeah. can't be a creep. You know I'm what I mean? I'm sure you face people who judge you. But, that, but you know, so obviously, uh, uh, you know, you get into it. Now, I don't know exactly, but like, did you... You you get into an argument, you know, with somebody, and 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 the kid died, right? You know, it got shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, but and and from what public knowledge, I know, you know, uh, was was your sister's uh, uh my, a husband or your brother was my baby mother's brother. Okay, baby mother's brother, right? Yeah. Now, was that something that like was a uh, like it was just one of those heated the moment things. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, me and him, like when I think like we wasn't enemies. That shit yeah. is definitely one of them heated the moment things. Like. I mean, it was it wasn't somebody we wasn't cool with. We fought a lot. Like it was definitely our first argument. But like looking back, it wasn't as. I mean, yeah, I was young, hot head, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. that's why I tell people, yo, it's very, very important. Don't carry a gun, yo, because yeah. if you got it, you way more likely to use it. You yeah. way more likely to be in a yo, situation be- with. You know what I mean? If you if this whatever happens, if you don't got it, what you gonna do? Your best, right or wrong. If if a motherfucker come in here with guns and we don't got, we gonna do what they say and try to get yeah. out alive. You know what I'm saying? And and a lot of people live like like live life like that. Like my pops is 77, never owned a gun in his life. He's all right. You know what I'm saying? But um, if you got it, you're more apt to use it. So I would tell, urge people. If you need a gun, let your friend hold it, your smart friend, because hopefully by the time it take you to get to him, you might have thought sensibly, or maybe he might yeah, yeah, help sure. you think sensibly. And sometimes that's all it takes. You might go to sleep, wake up four hours later, and you done calm down a whole bunch. Like, man, fuck that nigga. That nigga's a buster. Yeah, sure, sure. You know Just let I mean? it go. But a lot of shit, I was young, young and stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing I think you even said that I think anybody in this world can relate to is, you know, being a high head. And I think as you get older, you get more mature. But you were young, you know. Like, and you learn. You learn shit. Go. Being like, a I look at, I look at things now. I like, even like, you know, somebody cut me off the other day. Dude rolled out his window, told me to go fuck myself. I was about to rev. I, 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 I literally wanted to just drive through his car. Yeah. And then I was like, yo, I got to get to my son's piano lesson. Do I want this dude to, like, you know, fuck you. Sometimes, yeah. that's why I like when I be in a good mood. Because sometimes when I be in a good mood and, like, people do shit like that, I, 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 I be playing, but like, pardon me, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, you know, and sometimes it's just your mood. You got to just try to really stay in that energy so you don't go that way. And you got to know you and your triggers. You know, if you know you're a hothead, then you got to keep yourself in that sooth, soothing area in life so you, so you make it, man. Like, this yeah. shit is a game. It's... It's easy to lose, but it's, you know, easy to win, too. You know what I mean? It's it's easy to go either way. It's all what you want to do with it. You know, it's going to be pitfalls and all type of shit and obstacles. We got to just duck and dodge yeah. and get around them. You know, I fell a one, a big one. Yeah, sure, <laughs> You know sure. what I'm saying? But, you know, got to dust off and try not to fall in another one. But they there. You know they there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's ways around it, but they there. So, you know, it's... About patience, too. A lot of us, when I say us, I say especially, you know, black, Spanish, like, in our hoods, we don't have patience. We want what we want now. Sure, sure, sure. You know, that immediate instant gratification shit. And it's like we can't do the process of going to college and graduate school so we can make the six figures for the rest of our life. Bro, if you can learn a little you know? patience, I, I want to give you, I, I want to give the internet a, a quick example, man, uh, sitting down with the one and only... Uh, Chi Ali, I want to give the internet a quick example. And that example is this. I remember, like, yo, I just, in my 40s, I just started to have credit. And uh, I always carried it around cash. Me too. <laughs> yo, and I want to explain to you why. Because I didn't have the patience 
to wait to do it. Like, oh, you gotta you gotta earn credit. It's gotta take time, history, get a card, pay it off. You know what I mean? Like, like, like. T- I didn't have so I literally wasted 10, 15 years of my life, which I could have had the patience. You know, even 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 a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? It's like you don't want to. Well, honestly, this is how I feel. Just would change a lot of my life. With the, if you have a little bit of patience, I'm not saying you're supposed to change your whole fucking life around. But if you have patience in some buckets, you could shit will happen for you that hasn't happened. Yeah, to you. for sure. Because I'll be honest, with you sometimes you want them having in this day and age too. You want them having to do the shit all over again. You take a shortcut. You know what I mean? So it's like you know, and that's what you don't want. Because trust me, it's so much harder to live a life of of luxury or having shit, and then the Years later, to have nothing to really be struggling, I would much rather do it the other way, be struggling, and then years later have than to have and years later yeah, be struggling. Yeah, that's important. That's you know important. I mean? to, to and a lot of like with a lot of the rappers, and it's hard when the fame goes away, the money's not there. It's hard when you're used to that. You used to that 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 yelling. That you know what I mean. And when it's not there no more, that shit. Yeah, that's why I tell people transition while you're hot, man. You know, yeah, uh, uh, put some money in real estate, open up a business. So when people look at it, like, what's he doing? You know, he, 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 you know, they use that in, insane word. He's not relevant anymore. I don't know, dude's a millionaire. What do you mean? Yeah. Like, you know, he's not. You know, and he, honestly, when you are right, shit like that really don't affect you as much. But, you know, you know, like they say, when people say the truth hurts, when somebody say something, that shit really strike a nerve. Is you know it hits home, you know, and motherfucker, oh, you are still broke, broke ass nigga. If you know you really broke, you it's gonna hurt more than if yeah, you. Yeah, sure, sure, you're right. You're rich, you're, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're right. That happens to actors too, though. That happens to actors too. Yeah. You know, I've seen that firsthand. Yeah, I worked yeah. on uh, with the Sopranos cast members. A lot of those dudes, they starving. They haven't eaten in a long time. They had uh, little parts here and there, and and and, and some of them didn't get yeah, it. Yeah, that shit is. You know, it's a struggle, man. And, but and you, it, but you sound like you sit here and you're like, oh, um, what's his name? I used to be on the show. Like, you feel good about yourself, but you ain't that. You know what I mean? Big yeah. anymore? You haven't and, done any and work. It's, I mean, it's hard to. You can't even if you a very good actor or artist or whatever. You it's hard to budget over 10, 15 years. You know what I'm saying? Like you can budget your money, but shit, ten, fifteen years, a lot of shit doesn't happen. Yeah, and if you're not. Making money, you is gonna be broke sooner or later. Yeah. Unless you just, you know, filthy rich. But I tell everybody that if you're not making money, you will be broke sooner or later. Absolutely, man. That, yeah, that, <laughs> internet. That is. Listen, make sure you tweet that and then put Chi Ali after the uh, tweet. So, so, so as we uh, wind down this episode, so boom, this happens. Unfortunate situation. And, and you just decided you went on the run right after that because I remember hearing you know I remember, I remember hearing I was this with shit. my man the OG nigga. but what time that shit happened I was at one of my partner's house and I think it was like my partner his wife another dude and his wife and I think my man and I think somebody was like you should turn yourself in somebody else was like yeah you probably get less time and my man was like yo I need to holler at you real quick. Mm. And we left and never came back. <laughs> he was like, "We got to get the fuck away from them." I don't even know how. I like how they talking. <laughs> they get ready to call How the fuck they suggesting for you to turn uh, yourself in? Like, you know what I'm saying? He's yeah, like, that's classic. he's like, I yo, like this guy. he's like, yo, homie, you got a body. Ain't yeah. no DA gonna say, well, he turned himself yeah. in. Let's not give him 25 years. He like, yo, you, I might never see you again. I can't watch you do that. The nigga, I swear to God, he cried. So you hit you, you you hit the run. You decided to change. Then you change your name, right? I had a whole. He cried, and then he put me on the game. He got me situated. New new new, I had new, a new birth, birth certificate. Yo, how did you ID, how did you react license, to people calling you by your new credit name? card? Alonzo. My name was Alonzo Demetrius Corbin. <laughs> Who? Alonzo Demetrius Corbin. Okay. Um, that's the movie right there. How did I? I mean. <laughs> I guess I got used to it. People used to call me Zo. That's the movie. Yeah, it's, it, I mean, yeah, that's I mean, the movie. The plot twist. I guess it was weird, but I guess I got. Yeah, hold used on, to it. seriously, I, that's the movie. Yeah, I'm saying Alonzo yeah. Demetrius Corbin. And, and and when they see the movie, they're gonna be like, "Why is this name?" And you go through this whole journey. Who? And then yeah. when you when they get to this You're when like, they get oh, when they get shit. to the meat and potatoes, like, oh, that's, that's why. why this shit is called. Well, I tell you, tell you, Demetrius Corbin. Who 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 uh who came up with that name? My man Lord that took me on a run, the nigga was fucking with a, ch- a chick. Yeah. He stole her son's social security. Like he was he was like two. 
That was his name, I guess. Mm. So he had the social security. He was like, here. He was like, you need a wallet, homie. You can't be running around with no ID. You got to get a wallet. So boom, he gave me the social security card. So I got that. I think after that, um, we I had to get you know get the motor vehicles, but you need an address. So boom, we went to like a leasing a housing development. We got a lease, blank lease. Went to the library, typed in all my shit. So now we got the we got the uh, address and a social. I think with the address and the social, we went to motor vehicles, and I was able to get. Um, a license for address, get an mm-hmm. uh, ID, I, yeah. and then I took the the written test, like the same this in Atlanta, and Georgia. I did this shit the same. Oh, day. A permit. I took the written test, pass, and took the road test the same day. So yeah. I got my license all in one day. So the driver and teacher came in and called you Alonzo. It wasn't. I just had to take the permit test. Oh, I'm talking about the drive. Okay, I thought you meant you the road know, test. The road test, yeah. They was like Mr. Corbin. You know what I'm saying? That was you. Like name. who? Yeah. So, so boom. Once I got that. I'm legit now. So, like, I'll be in stores playing around and stuff, filling out. You know, you see the visa shit and fill it out. I start getting credit cards. I'm like, oh, shit. And my man is like, yo, you know you could buy a gun, right? I'm like, nah. He like, I'm telling you, go in the gun store. Nigga ran. Yeah, you're good. You could buy as many as you want today. Bought me a gun. Like, that shit now, was now, ill. Now, going through your mind, I mean... I thought I was going to jail. I told okay, my man, yo, yeah. there's no way. Like, when I'm leaving, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to jail. Even even as you become Alonzo, which is crazy for me to uh, now, Homie, I'm in motor vehicles, yeah. scared to death. My man yeah, is like, yeah, you good, yeah, you yeah. good, relax. And I'm like, I'm nervous. Everywhere I go, I'm nervous. But then, you know, after a while... You know, familiarity breeds contempt. I start getting comfortable. Like, I remember when I got caught, I remember, like, I couldn't believe it. Like, I, I couldn't believe it, Pete. You would have thought I was fucking, I had all type of money. Because I was like, like, I think it's a, like, I just was mad arrogant. Like, I couldn't believe it. How, how did it get to America's Most Wanted? That was the victim's family. Okay. It. That was more or less them pushing it. And that was that guy, I remember watching those shows. What was that guy named? John Walsh or uh-huh. something like that? Mm. His son had got kidnapped. Yeah, yeah, and that's what made him start that. Yeah. So, so, so w- when when they got you, you just like at a home or something like that. I had, I think I was getting tired. I was in the, I had came back to the Bronx. So I had an apartment in Atlanta, but then when they put the America's Most Wanted, I left there. That's when I started. I was in Camden. I was actually okay. living in okay, Camden. okay. So I'm living in Camden, but you know Camden. Yeah, is, yeah. <laughs> Camden <Sorrow>. is Camden. <laughs> I ends up getting into some shit in Camden. So when I get into some shit in Camden, I start running back and forth. I'm in, I'm playing New York. I'm still out there, like getting my little money out there, but I'm in New York more. But you know, I have, like I think it was one of my ex's brother who we was cool with. I was staying at his crib. But I mean, I don't know who told me because you know I had different bitches coming in, and he had bitches coming in, and one of the main chicks he was fucking with was living in Throg's Neck. So I'm thinking this bitch don't know me. She know me. You know what I'm saying? Like, they got signs in the store and throw and all that. Like, she they had a reward me. out and shit? Yeah, all of that. Like, she know me. Like, but, you know, I don't know who told me, who told me where I was. But yeah. I know somebody now, told when you get When, when <laughs> you get caught, being that you went on the run, that's when you were facing what? Uh, they give, don't they give you more time for that? Nah, like, I was never arrested. Oh, copy, copy. So okay. I wasn't really so they're on looking the for you. run. Y'all looking for me, but, like, I could... Even when they put a warrant out, like, shit, I ain't know I had a warrant. I ain't on no run. I'm chilling. Like, I ain't, y'all looking for me? They're going to be like, well, you just left home and, yeah, I was tired, nigga. What the fuck? <laughs> but technically, they can't prove that I know. It wasn't like I got locked up, bailed out, and dipped. You know what I mean? So, it just, if I would have went to trial, like, my lawyer was like, that's going to look bad on the jury. Yeah. Look for the jury. And that, because he's was, just he, like, because he's like, it's human nature. Some people believe if I ain't do nothing, I'm not running. You know what I mean? And he's like, if some people you cannot, you're not going to take that out their mind. They're going to feel like if you didn't do nothing, he's like, we're going to say you were scared, you was this, you was that. But some people going to feel like, but if you didn't do nothing, why Yeah, you won't run. Yeah, why you, you run? Yeah, I mean? yeah. And you know. You know, you, you were facing 25 to life, right? Mm-hmm. And you, uh, you, your lawyer, did your lawyer suggest or you suggest that you got 14, you would, pay, you would take it a... Boom, my offer was 22 and a half to life. Like, when I got locked up, they offered me 22 and a half to life. You go to trial, you're facing 25 to life. So I was going to trial. This is an old brainer. So I'm on Rikers Island fighting my case like three years with the offer 22 and a half to life. 
Like when I hit like I think thirty four months on the island, I had a black judge, and a judge started pressing the DA. She's like, "Yo, if y'all not ready to go forward with trial, I'm giving this man a bail. Like y'all got him locked up, going on three sure. years, and y'all not really you're like, fighting your case from yeah, Rikers. Yeah, but they not doing it. Like I ain't have no bail, and they not. I'm just getting different court dates. I'm just coming to court once a month. Like they not even almost ready to pick a jury. They not ready for nothing. They just giving me court dates. So when a judge start pressing them about a bail, that's when they was like, they gave me an offer. Instead of 22 and a half to life, they offered me 15 years. So my lawyer was like, yo, I think you should take it. But meanwhile, before they offered that, when the offer was 22 and a half to life, my lawyer was like, yo, we going to trial. We got a nice case for trial. We going. So when they offered the 15 years, he's like, yo, I think you should think about it. You got three years in. It's a flat bid. You don't got no parole board action. He was like, you don't understand you don't have no parole board action. Like, you got a date to go home. You coming home. You know what I'm saying? With parole, with that life, sure, sure. They could, they with could that keep, life yeah. parole, you know, yeah, they could yeah, deuce you yeah. forever. So, at the time, I was like, 15 years? Hell no. You said we had a good case to go to trial with the other day. We going to trial, nigga. You know what I'm saying? That was my attitude. Like, I'm not like 15 years? Hell fucking no. Like, I was 22, 23 at the time, or 24 maybe by then. I'm like... 15 years, more than half the time I was alive. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't see it. I was like, hell no. Boom, my mom's coming to see me. She's crying. My brother. They sending everybody. Gangsta Lou from Mob Style. They sending everybody trying to convince me. I'm like, nah, 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 nah. I'm not taking 15 years. So my next court date, my lawyer's like, he got the DA went down to 14. My lawyer got him to go down there. He comes in the back like, gee, I think you crazy. Like, you should take this. You don't understand. You got three years in. He's like, yo, you got a date. You going home. He's like, I'm like, and so I said, me and my lawyer got into it. I'm like, well, motherfucker, before we had the offer, you telling me we had a good case to go to trial with? Yeah, yeah. He's like, he's like, we have an excellent case to go to trial with. But with a jury, you don't know. And you really want to risk, like, you know what I'm saying? You risking sure, sure, sure. 25 to life. You know what I mean? So I bit the bullet. <laughs> I, you know, I guess he he wore me down. My mom, my mom's really wore me down. You know, she was crying. I know I could do that. I just want to see you home while I'm alive. And you know, yeah. And you came home doing so. So you you did your time uh, all over, all over upstate, yeah, all over New York State. Yeah, and and, and only I ain't touch Attica. Okay, I ain't, I ain't go to the Buffalo side, but like upstate, um. Auburn, Elmira, Clinton, yep, yep. Clinton Annex, um, Sing Sing. Or, you know, most of the maxes, with the exception of the joints on the Buffalo side, I I um I touched. You know it's crazy too, uh and I'm glad to see you home. Glad to see you uh, you know, staying home and, and, and doing your thing and helping out a lot of things with my son. I know you've done a lot of things uh uh in the sense of uh, you know, prison reform, in the sense of speaking to prisons. But more importantly, too, you know, a lot of people don't understand this. While you're in jail, uh, you could have got more time. For you could sure. fight with a dude. Could have, uh, could, hey, could, look, as simple as this. I never forget when I was in there. Some dudes were fighting. A dude slipped, hit his head, killed, died him. He, just simple like that, you know. Yeah, Not as dude is fighting another case. We trying to give you a body. You know, yeah, and, and, and telling you, cop out, take yeah. this twelve flat, take fifteen. Seen dudes flat go in with two years. Do ten. My you know man what I mean? Little, my yeah. man Little had cops out to a three flat. Little Latin King. Yeah. He stabbed the nigga plain like they wasn't even beefing. The nigga died. I think he ended up copping out to a fifteen flat for that shit. Crazy, yeah, crazy. Three flat ended up getting a fifteen flat. You know, so so you do you do wind up doing okay. So you got the fourteen. You already had three in, so you did about eleven. Uh, no, you fourteen. You do. I think you 12. do like 12 on yep, 14. Yep. Okay. I had you three had three and so you did nine. Yeah. So take us through the, when, you, the, the, when, when you come home, the, the first day. Like, how, 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 because people get institutionalized. Yeah. I and, mean, I, like, like, that's one of the things I really credit my family. Like, they, you know, I went on visits a lot. Then I was going on conjugal visits. Um, even before, oh, even, that's but, what it, even before I was married, I was going on the trailer visits with, with my family, like my mom's and pops okay. and my daughter. And then when I got married, you know, it was a different wave. But um, I mean, I think like when you get the visit, the visits, the mail, like that shit keeps you in tune with the outside world. You know what I'm saying? So I think coming home, I was, I was ready. You know, I was of course you're gonna be a little slow, and you know what I mean. It took yeah, me a yeah, while to really yeah. get loopy again. But um, you still want to wear Nietzsche? You know? Um, yeah, you know, I mean, 
people. I'm trying to think who. I don't. I don't know. Really know what I want. I just wanted some. Like, you not to get fresh. But, You're from the Bronx. Yeah, but um, it was just a lot. You know, I mean, I was just just taking it. I couldn't believe it. That shit is like when you be when you got that much time. It's like so many days you wake up dreaming you free, and you wake up and see themselves. It's like. It's like freedom is like a dream. Yeah. It's like, a, like, you know how you be like, yo, if I hit the lotto, I'm going to get this. You, you never Bro. do that? Like, yo, if I hit the, if I had 40 million, I would do this. That That's what this shit is. You like, yo, if I was free, I'm going to do, when I get free, I'm going to do this, that. And it's just like your number finally played. You know, even when times get hard, when I'm out, you're out, you know, I, I can't speak for you, but, you know, I'm just, you know, I want more out of life and I continue to try to evolve and be better and better. But I'm so thankful just to be like... I, I, like some people talk about I remember you know When you had little bids Like you don't talk about them Because people have big bids You know what I uh, mean But yo An hour An too. hour An hour away It's like I, I don't, I don't ever want to Get them my time little bids yeah. And be wearing scars For the rest of their life I, 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 I don't want you know I, 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 I don't ever want to give Take a long bid for that Yeah you know, that shit happens, man. Now, shit your daughter, happens. when you went away You know, that's tough Because, you know I, I, I went through that uh, Not as long, but You know, as you, but your daughter, you know, not being there when she was growing up, missing some of those years, you know. Um, you have a relationship with her now? Yeah, me and my daughter's my twenty one we cool. We beefing right now. But yeah. We got a great relationship. Yeah, I've been there, I've been in and out great, of that. She's we got a great be, relationship yeah. right now. We just, you know, at war. Yeah. But um yeah, we cool. Like I said, her she really kinda more or less grew up with my parents. So my mom and her, like they was, was my riders. Every Friday yeah. they on every Friday they was on a visit. Saturdays yeah. once I got them north. God bless. When I was on, that's my word, three years on Rikers Island, they made them miss four or five visits. Five yeah. Friday visits. Yeah. Always. On the visit. On the visit. On the, on the count. My mom's was coming early. They calling me dumb early. Now, 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 what, what about uh, your daughter's mother? Did you ever speak to her again or? We cool. Yeah. We good. We at home. Yeah, I think we might be beefing right now too. <laughs> but just this right now, I don't now, mean she, the laugh. Nah, I don't mean that. I'm just nah, saying. She, I think she wanted some money, and I, yeah. I told her no. Yeah, I yeah. I think I told her I call her back or some shit. But other now, than, other now than we cool. Yeah, like, that's that's like family. You know what I mean? Now that's, with with the doc, right? I know you're shopping it. Um, to let people know who may not know what some of the doc is about. You know, I mean, the life. documentary is basically the book. Another kind of freedom is my autobiography. Yep. That's my life story. That's way probably way more in depth than the doc the doc you, focuses on it's on my life but it focuses more on the musical side on the, on the musical years and then we get into everything um the dudes i shot it with big shouts to my boy tom and my boy jb over at versus they got mm -hmm. an editing company called versus um this is something they just delved in on the side they just you know trust the something they out. believed in uh-huh uh they you know they grew up hip-hop kids so at this stage of the game, we we finish shooting, we we're, we're shopping it. Um, the licenses on the music is what's the issue mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Like it's just that shit is gonna be like in the six figures. You know, you, that shit is sure, man sure, bread. Sure, sure. So, you know, we trying to finagle how we gonna about it. I know if we go with Viacom, like you know they own V uh, VH1, VH1 and yeah. TV now. Yeah. I know they got like special deals where we won't have to pay to get everything cleared you know what i'm saying i guess they probably got a deal because they're a music company um so i don't know how they're gonna finagle it but you know they working he done my man jb done invested a lot of bread so i know he's just trying to go about it the right way so you know he could get his bread back and we could get a little bread at the same time too yeah I see, listen uh Internet who are listening, make sure you go to chialibx.com. Yeah. Uh, check out the book. Check Another him out, Chi Ali BX yeah. on Instagram. You know, uh, one thing that I love to hear is when people are away, uh, sometimes you get surprised by people who support you, who come visit you. you sometimes know? you get surprised by the people who, who don't. don't. You know, who are some people? I don't even you want know to know who's surprised. Oh, yeah, you know yeah. Chapito? Uh, you don't know Chapito, Mike? He be with Fat Jonah. He live. In, he he work with Eve. With Eve Rivera. On, I, I, on I, know, I, I don't. I don't know him. I know of him. Yo, Chapito, my nigga. We grew up. I know you talking about T.S. Yes. Chapito from Watson. Yeah. He from the Bronx. Knew me since you know I was twelve, thirteen, like before rap, a little few years before rap. So we was always good. But Chapito hung out with my older dudes, with you know CeeLo yeah. and the older Legion dudes. Um, but you know we was always cool, but never. You know, like, we never hung out just me and him. You know what I mean? We may hang out if he with my man CeeLo and everybody hanging. But, you know, we always had a good relationship. But, you know, cordial. 
My nigga, when I came home, Fat Joe flies me to um Miami. This I'm home like a week. He's shooting a video with Lil Wayne, a uh, yellow tape video. Mm -hmm. So Eve is doing it. Chapito and Eve partners. Chop come to me, he like, yo, G, what's good? We kicking that shit. So like, you know, like 20 minutes later, the nigga like, yo, G, you could do me a favor? I'm like, what's good? He was like, yo, you could give me a soda from the store? I'm like, yeah. He like, yeah, he gave me the money. Nigga gave me a G. Really? He gave me a stack. He gave me a hundred, ten hundreds folded up. Word. I was like, yo, you give me a Pepsi. <laughs> get you, get like, like, that was like the last nigga, homie, like I would have thought. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, you come home, you know, you did your time. That's a lot of money to get, give somebody well, you get, you get, that get you're back not on your super yeah, cool sure, with. You know sure. what I'm saying? Like, that's love. That was love. Like, because we, I mean, we, after that, I feel like we super cool. But even, I mean, we was, we was like crew, but like, like distant crew. You know what I'm saying? But, um, that shit was love. You know what I mean? But as far as when I was locked up, as far as people surprising me, um, not really. Probably, probably on the uh, on the on the other on the wing. Revert or letting you down, and and yeah. where you expect people who would have at least wrote you, uh, uh, sent you something or came and visit. But, yeah, I mean, I didn't get caught up in that. I don't, I don't know. I, yeah. I guess I understood. You know, life goes on, and I really felt like you know, jail is for your girl. Like you know, yeah. that's when you supposed to have a girlfriend. That your bitch, your bit with you. Yo. Niggas ain't doing no bit. Niggas bring your girl some bread, bring some her some weed. Some people may not yeah. understand conjugal visits, yeah. right? Trailer visits. Yo, uh, just so for people listening who may not know, you're actually able to go into a trailer and they it's have a stove. It's basically like you in a hotel like a room. Kitchen. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like you in a hotel room where you could cook and all of that. Yep. And how long so, were you were able to stay in there? It's like from Friday, you'll go from Friday to Sunday or Monday to Wednesday or mm -hmm. Tuesday to Thursday, depending. You know, every jail yep. got different cycles. And you're and allowed shit. to get a cooked meal. And you're also allowed to get some other things. Yeah. You know what I mean? But your if people's got your people's got to bring everything. Them shits is expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got to bring all the food yep, for the yep, whole yep. trailer, all the seasoning. Everything got to be sealed, so it's not like yeah, you know, hermetically that's, sealed. That seasoning should be expensive, yo. Yeah. yeah. So you got to get new shit every trailer, every trailer. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, you got to have some bread. But like, if you in some of the jails that's far away, like Attica, if your wife can come during a week, like say you got a wife that don't work. And you in Attica. I know niggas in Attica going on trailers every 24 days, every 28 days, every 22 days. If you could go during the week, because it's so far, ain't that many people probably even on a cycle. And then the people at all, wives probably can only come like on the weekends. You know what I'm saying? So the weekends probably might be a four or five month wait. But if your wife would come on a Tuesday or a Thursday, niggas is going out once a month. You know what I mean? So that shit, you know, it helps. You know, if you got to do a bid, you know, I know some niggas that... Who might get to Attica? They got twenty five years. They girl a move in the town up there. You know what I'm sure. saying? They get in their trailers. She will get a little job or whatever she doing. You know, you know if a bitch want to do it, she gonna do it. You know, uh, I honestly mean this. You know, uh, you've been through some tough times, and 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 you know you're home, and I'm proud to see. It. I'm proud to see anybody home. We ain't going back. You know, when you look at it, and you know, we're my fool. Yeah, <laughs> with my food. <laughs> I need my food. Food is coming up. Yeah, we're ending now. Uh, when, you know, how, how how do you want like, especially hip hop and people? How, how do you want to be remembered? You know what I mean? Um, I just want to be remembered as someone who came on a rap scene. Um, was down with a dope crew when he met. Um, rough times. You know, he 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 kept it tall. Like I stand proud and keeping it tall. Like I ain't never tell on nobody. Um, and it's like, you know, I grew up in these streets. I got mm. caught caught up for one thing, but I grew up in these streets. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I want to definitely be remembered as someone who kept it 100. He was a loyal dude, stood by his morals. Um, For the most part, tried to live righteous. I mean, we all do wrong, but, you know, I definitely try to make my rights out wrong, uh, with my wrongs. Um, And just was a good dude. Like, I just want to I want to be remembered. I want good vibes when people mention my name. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, you know, some mm. people, when you say Kobe Bryant, it's good vibes. You know what I'm saying? Golf a bit, somebody like Suge died. Like, it ain't going to be the same vibes. Yeah, sure, sure. You know what I'm saying? And I don't got, I don't know nothing against them, but I want good vibes. You know, it's different vibes. You know, when you say Bobby Brown, that's my nigga, but it ain't totally good vibes. It's all type of vibes. You know what I'm saying? Ups to, I want positive, good vibes when you mention me. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And for the most part, you know, aside from, you know, select few people I probably really hurt, 
I think. I've accomplished that, or you yeah. know, but I, I guess I shouldn't speak. I gotta let other people speak on that. Yeah, of course. Now, last thing. Now, with mom and pops, or whoever you felt like you uh, let down since you've been home. You know, you've been home for a, a minute. You know, you feel like you were able to. Uh, you know, I, you know, I always, you know, for me, I, I use for me example as we end this. You know, I feel like I put my mom and pops through hell. Um, <laughs> Definitely. And um, you know, there's never a way I could really pay him back. And I remember. Uh, I went uh, back to this uh, jail that I was in. They asked me to speak, and we got on a plane, and I had them front row. It was like five thousand people I was talking to, and I was literally telling them like, "Yo, I'm, uh, you know, you, I was in this seat two couple of years ago. You know, you could go home, you could make it if you were a hustler." Yeah, you know, I think work. for the most yeah. part, that's all they want. They want yeah. to see me free, and just you know, happy. You know, happy and comfortable. You know, not struggling, mm. not worried about a dollar, not sure, you know, sure. having a. You know, risk my freedom or not getting caught up with no broads and different shit and BS. You know, they just want me to have a nice drama-free life. I think they want to, when they rest, they want to rest sure. knowing rest he's all right. You yeah. know what I mean? He's all right. Internet's chialibx.com. Make Premium sure you go Pete, check, yo. Make sure you go check out that book. Chialibx.com, another kind of freedom. Check it out, y'all. You already know what it is. Bronx Listen, shit all day. Premium but, Pete. We going to see either Jada Kiss or Fat Joe tonight. One of the two. Big shouts to my son. Listen, you know, uh, we, I, I, I got to have my son up here. I had him up a couple years ago, but I got to have him back. Listen, I really appreciate you stopping by. Your journey is special. Like I said, even there's bumps in the road. You know, never you never quit, and, and and that's something to be proud of. You know what I mean? You never you never quit on yourself. <clears throat> There's people quit on themselves. Yeah, uh, we uh, can't give uh, up. We got to keep it going. Like I'm saying, there's still a lot of shit I ain't do yet, Pete. Yeah, we gotta, I got to count. It's a coming. Million, I got to count a million dollars still. It, it's, you know coming. What I'm it's coming. It's coming. Internet. The one and only Chi Ali. Peace, y'all.